Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm going to take you through a few ways that I would approach painting up an army of the new Croup miniatures. So Games Workshop sent us through the launch box for them and I built up a few of the Carnivore models. They build fine, they're, they're not too complicated, which is great. Um, sort of core troop unit of the army. And I thought to myself, what would I focus on if this was what I was doing if I was painting up an army? And for me, the obvious one is the skin. Um, I would play around with lots of different skin colours, but I would need to make sure that there was still a cohesiveness, a sort of harmony uh, across the army between it. So that would be my main focus for the painting. And then looking at a few of the other little elements that are on this, so maybe the metals, things like the the tattoos. The yeah, but To be honest with you, there's not much else on them, is there? It's, it's basically naked chicken monsters running around with some rifles. Um, but we should have some fun. Let's paint. So over uh, a grey primer, I'm going to give the miniatures a base coat using hull red. And I've chosen hull red because I think this is going to work as a shadow colour, a sort of universal shadow colour for the all the red, different skin colours that I'm going to use uh, on these guys. So it's uh, a Vallejo model colour paint, so it's quite thick. And I've thinned this about two or three drops of thinner for every drop of paint. I'm spraying at about 20 to 25 psi and I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle. And for this I'm using our Harder and Steenbeck Signature Series Evolution. So once I've got a nice solid base coat of that down, I'm going to do a, a fairly simple pre-shade. You might hear this called zenithal, something like that. But essentially I'm loading up a Rakarth flesh, which is a light off-white, and it's what I'm going to use as the highlight colour across everything on these models as well, again to help bring in that harmony. Um, thin this down slightly less, maybe two drops of thinner to paint, uh, just so it's going through nice and smoothly and applying translucent layers of paint so I can see through each layer that I'm spraying on a little bit showing through. This means I can build that up and already get a nice little sort of gradient uh, going, going between the sort of dark red through to this, this very, I suppose pink, but you know, off-white colour. Um, and I'm just kind of going top down really. So pointing the miniature so my airbrush is almost the light source directly above the model, spraying down on it. So if we look at it from underneath, it's still pretty much entirely red. But if we look at it directly from above, it's almost pure uh, Rakarth flesh. This is a... Uh, it's, it's tricky. There's, I think you can paint the crew amazingly. I think I think they're really fun models. There's something a bit different for 40k, which is great. But I struggle to see how you paint crew quickly, and they look good. I think you can paint them efficiently, which is my goal sort of here. But the more and more I was getting into the process, the more I was like, just get the vibe right. Enjoy the painting process. Get the vibe right, and if you enjoy all of that, and you have an army at the end of it, it's going to be easy. That's that's my sort of feelings on it. Uh, anyway so you can see here i've got that simple top down highlight and now we're ready to apply a few different colors so onto the colors i've played around with a bunch of different ones um, i actually did something not dissimilar to this a few months ago with a flesh eater quartz project although it was a bit more stylized um and yeah i i wanted i wanted all the tones and the, and the real vibe of these these crew to be feel a lot more natural in the sense of you know lots of earthy tones um just picture them sort of in in nature um, rather than the the fleshy stuff which was all just meant to be quite stylized with weirdness um, and in the end I settled on this orange brown color for the orangey brown ones which is uh, Morn Fang Brown. Thin that about two or three drops of thinner to paint you can see I was applying quite thin layers of the paint on there building it up getting a nice color. Uh, for the green guys I'm doing exactly the same but I'm using Lauren Forest. Again thinned a very similar amount because it's a very similar consistency of paint. Now I just wanted to say massive thank you to those of you that support us over on Patreon. Um, myself and Andy are now doing this full time, both of us, which means we can put tons of focus into producing a bunch of content for you both here and each week over on Patreon as well. It's a bunch of us as well as you know a ton of other projects we've got coming up, MPO, paints, all that sort of thing. So just wanted to say we both massively, massively appreciate it. Um, and if for any reason you can't support us over on Patreon but you enjoy what we do, then hit the like button, hit subscribe, comment on the video all of that makes a massive difference and check out the various affiliate links that are down in the description as well all of that support genuinely makes a difference um, and i enjoy reading the comments as well so you know thanks a lot for doing that guys i really do appreciate it um and for the blue color in the end i had to use a contrast paint i couldn't quite find a, a paint i wanted uh, and this is griff charger gray um, the reason i wanted to not use contrasts for the skin color on these guys was to do with highlighting but also I love using contrast like this, but they just, it is a different look to just using a, a paint. Um, I think it, you end up with a, 
a stronger sort of pre-shade showing through, um, which wasn't quite quite the look I was going for. But uh, as I think you'll pick up in this video, this was a, a really fun painting thing, but I wasn't quite sure. It was growing quite organically as I was moving through. I usually do loads of test models and I'm happy. This one, I did a bunch of test models, wasn't quite there, and I just thought, ah, oh, sod it, just get on with painting it. It'll, it'll be okay. Now, talking about tying the various colours together. So we've got a universal shadow colour in the pre-shade, which is our uh, hull red. We've got Rakar Flesh as our highlight. And now I'm going to use the same wash colour. And I'm making up a wash here using Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint and Lamium Medium. So letting it down with the Lamium Medium means it's just going to behave a lot more like a wash and a lot less like a contrast paint. So essentially it will just run into the recesses and it won't overly tint uh, those flat surfaces or those raised surfaces. And I'm using a nice large brush here, as you can see. And I'm just working in sections of the model. So I do all his head, I do his arm, do his torso, uh, and work my way around like that. I found that using the larger brushes is key, really, to avoiding getting those little tide marks where you move paint that is drying. Um, we don't really want to do that. So nice large areas we're covering at one time. And you can see here the, the Gilliman flesh, it's going to have a more pronounced impact on, say, the, the green skin or the blue skin, um, but having it there across all the different colours should again help tie them uh, together nicely. Uh, and I chose Gilliman Flesh because it was that kind of ready brown. Um, I did try this with oil paints uh, on one of the testers. It just didn't work for me. Couldn't get the colour right. Um, I just couldn't couldn't get the the type of shading that you get by using these contrasts with the with the medium. Um, so I preferred this. One thing I do do is go back in any areas that I've got a real pooling of that liquid, just wick it up with a, a dry brush and uh, just stops you getting a weird build up in any of those areas. And it does take a little while to dry that mixture. And I don't like to rush it with a hairdryer in case I move the paint around and get those aforementioned tide marks and, and things like that. So whilst it's drying, I'm just going to go in and black out the areas of metal uh, on the models. Now let's have a look at them see me forgetting to edit out me changing the lighting there um yeah so really really happy at this stage for me blacking out not only prep stuff um for the metallics and things but it also really helps me get a look at that airbrush stage um so when whether that's an armor color or in this case a skin color a, a, a color that dominates the majority of the model i find blacking out the areas around it really really helps me it frames it and tells me if i'm on the sort of right track uh, with what i'm doing with them and i felt very confident uh, at this stage so I wanted to do a highlight and although this is army painting which means you know getting it done looking good on the table it also it, it needs to be enjoyable it's not speed painting um, so because the flesh was the, the majority of the miniature I think the focal point I didn't mind spending a little extra time and what I've opted for is sort of highlighting but also adding lots of little spots now this is not stippling to do very very uh, subtle highlighting on skin that you might see i want to see the dots here because i want the skin to look spotty dotty whatever you whatever you call it um as you can see for the the, the gray one i used a color called caspian blue by scale 75 i did need to mix in a little bit of the rack art to, to lighten that one up then uh, i've used strachan green uh, for the green one here and you can see i'm focusing on the areas that i would put highlights on so those that are facing upwards towards the light I'm also doing lots of these nice dots uh, to create that sort of um, texture on, on the miniature. Not a physical texture, but, uh, you know, a textured skin, a spotty skin. Uh, and for the Mornfang, I'm using Gold Quag Brown, uh, which is a dry, it's called a dry paint. It's just really thick. Once you get it on the wet palette and thin it out, it's just it's a normal paint again. Um, so it's fine. Um, so all of them got this one color highlight. Uh, and honestly, this took, I don't know, two minutes at most a model. Um, so I still think it's, you know, it's, it's very achievable uh, on an army. Uh, and then I just mixed in a little Rakarth flesh each time and did a few more dots uh, on key areas. Now for the quills, um, it's the kind of his hair, but it's not really the quills on his head and, and then the ones that are poking out um, the rest of him. Obviously they're base coated black. And then I've worked up with a colour called US Olive Drab. I've done a sort of 50-50ish mix with the black initially. Then I've gone the UL, US Olive Drab on its own you can see here and I'm highlighting it by sort of tapping down the quills because I want to create that kind of um that ring effect that you see when you look at um look at a bird's feather look at look at a quill 
uh, and then I'm adding in a little rack of flesh again and doing slightly fewer of them and again that's the key here is we're using rack of flesh to highlight nearly everything to try and create that harmony uh, across the miniature and the reason I've chosen to go black with the quills is I wanted that high degree of value contrast so a uh, light and dark and can't really get much darker than black um, and I thought it would just again I don't want to pull focus from the skin here now one other thing I thought would look fun with these guys was some tattoos um, and this is just rack of flesh and I've just done some simple little band tattoos uh, around them normally when I do these videos I, I pour through the the army books and stuff uh, if I can get hold of them um, I sent the rest of the box off to one of our commission painters Harry to because he's got a crew army so he's painting a few out really nicely um, I wasn't quite sure here whether crew did tattoos or stuff but for me I figured it fit the vibe of the miniatures um, and I love how these guys look right now like for for a few stages and really not a lot of time I, I think they look wicked so uh, yeah really happy not tempted by them but um it's nice to really enjoy <laughs> painting something a little break from heresy uh, and, and and just enjoy painting these models and crew have been around forever right and used to love the old forge world crew they, they were great models as well so it's it's lovely to see them get this get this range refresh um for the cloth parts on the model what i think are cloth parts uh, i'm just base coating them using uh, english uniform uh, and then highlighting them up using uh, Zandri dust. Nothing complicated at all here. Um, you know, I've spent a bit more time on the skin, so the other areas of the model need to be quite simple uh, to keep it in that feasible sort of time frame for painting an army. Uh, and then the various leather bits, I've just gone for a nice dark brown, so I've chosen Rhinox hide here. Again, all the time I'm trying to keep to, to fairly natural tones, um, but making sure they're different enough to each other that it doesn't all just blend into one mushy sort of brown mess essentially uh, then i'm going to highlight that up using thondia brown uh, and then i'm going to mix in a little bit of rakarth in a minute uh, for sort of little edge highlights little scratches uh, on it as i say i think if you took were willing to take the time i, I really do think um the crew could be incredible uh, looking looking army uh, i didn't use rakarth i used dubai dubai brown uh, now the shoulder pad i don't quite get the deal with this do the towel give it to them i'm not sure um, but I just painted it up how I think it looks cool. Um, so I've base coated it using a dryad bark, and then I've mixed dryad bark with Rakarth flesh, and I'm going to do lots and lots of little stipply scratches. You can see here I'm using a very dilute mix, so I've got too much on my brush. But what this means is, is I can do tons and tons of these scratches and stipples without adding physical texture or too much physical texture to the model. Um, but we can put a lot of painted texture on there and then I just keep adding in Rakarth flesh work up until it's pure Rakarth flesh um, for the sort of edges uh, and highlights and again I chose to go really nice and light with the shoulder pad because again that value contrast so keeping areas either really dark or really light on the whole uh, compared to the skin and again the same across all the miniatures to help bring in that consistency and that harmony with them uh, little symbols uh, thankfully they pointed this out on the community article so i was able to have a look at this um i've just chosen corn red here um i mean it's it's painting in small small symbols really um i can't really give you any other tips here other than get comfortable lots of points of contact relax uh, keep it simple uh, and you're good to go um once that was dry a few little scratches with rackarth over the top just to blend that into the uh, the armor so it didn't look too weird now, one of my favorite, favorite things to paint uh, is wood on miniatures, and I would love to spend loads of time on it, but I felt that it was a significant enough element of the model, the wooden sort of butts on the rifles and stuff, that actually you could spend a little time making them look cool. Um, so I've gone for a Skaven Blight Dinge as a base coat. Now, I've deliberately thinned it a little so it goes on a bit streaky. I want those streaks. I want to start trying to create wood grain effect on the wood. I don't have loads of time to do it, is army painting so i'm keeping the paint thin keeping the strokes just kind of wibbly wobbly um, and then i'm just adding in you've guessed it uh, adding in a bit uh, it's not rack off flesh this time it's carrack stone we're adding in um so adding in a little bit of carrack stone to that mix again the reason for carrack stone rather than rack off is to take it away from the skin and the hair uh, that's on the model or the quills rather that are on the model so i keep adding a little carrack stone fewer and fewer of these wiggly lines to create that wood grain and then i've chosen to use gore grunter fur as the brown for my wood 
Um, you can play around with lots of different browns over this and you'll get lots of lovely different looking uh, wood. Um, thin coat first and then apply a second. You can see the quite a dramatic difference in colour that second coat uh, gives us. I always prefer with contrast to, to work with a thin layer and then, and then build it up like this rather than going because they can be very strong. Uh, and then once that was dry, just going in with a little mix. I just had a ton of browns on my palette, so I really just mixed them together till I got a lightish brown and then just painted a few little squiggly lines in there. Again, just to help reinforce that uh, that wood grain effect. Um, I do think it is a lovely feature, um, a model uh, sculpting wise, to give them the sort of wooden butts on these hunting rifles. Um, so like I say, I felt it was worthwhile spending a little extra time with the paint uh, on them. So once I had painted all of the elements that were going to be metallic, so everything we've seen really, uh, the only other thing is here is I, I painted the eyes yellow. Uh, I think I used Hobgrot Hide, just a couple of dots of Hobgrot Hide in there for the eyes. Um, just making sure that everything that wasn't metal was done. Uh, I've given the models a coat of matte varnish. This is a 50-50 mix of matte and ultra matte. And that's simply because, uh, particularly where I've used contrast paints on these models, they look a bit shiny. So I just wanted to get everything with a, a similar finish. And then for the metals, again, keeping it simple, I'm using Iron Warriors here to base the silvers with. Um, I've used a little Larmian Medium just to help it flow a little better. So a couple of coats of that um, will be good. And for all the metals, again, I've kept it really, really simple. One or two uh, colors. I'll pop them down in the description what I use, but it was Necker Gold, Gold, Decayed Metal, um, and a Screaming Skull, basically. A Screaming Bell, rather, were the, were the colors for the metals. Now, I'd been talking recently about wanting to use uh, enamel washes, um, and it is an effect I love, that the finish you get from enamels is unlike oils, it's unlike acrylics. I just I just love it, and I haven't had an opportunity to use them recently, partly because they take ages to dry, so when I'm filming, it's not always um, efficient to do. But I've chosen to use one called Starship Filth here. Um, ideally, you want to use an old synthetic brush or a new synthetic brush to make a difference. Um, I'm using an old sable brush here. Um, the reason being that we use mineral spirits to clean our brush with, with enamels. Uh, and if we need to thin them further, we would use mineral spirits. So they've already got lots of solvent in them, so they will ruin your natural hair brushes. But I just give a little, couple of little coats of that wash uh, over the metal. And that's it. It's done. I'm not going to do any more to it. And I love the, the old metal effect that it, that it gives you. Um, because the basing is slightly different to what I typically do on YouTube videos, I thought I'd take you through it very, very briefly. Um, it's sort of a mega quick version of uh, what you'll see Andy do a lot with his uh, his gaming armies. Um, but I'm going to use a, a brown texture paint here. Uh, this is called Russian Mud. Uh, I need to get a new pot because this was almost dried out. Um, you can thin it down with water. It's texture. It acts in as adhesive. So whilst it's still wet, I'm going to sprinkle on a load of that ground base. Um, again, the, the link for that should be down in the description um and yeah i just felt this would be a nice a nice base to put on these models again it just it just felt like it fit the vibe of them um i know it's quite marmite i know people a lot of people don't care for the the look of of natural materials like real materials as it were that aren't painted um but i i don't mind it i i really quite like how it how it sets the miniatures um off i think we've accomplished what we set out to do at the start that we've got very, very different skin colours on these miniatures, but I think they fit together beautifully. Um, I think, you know, you could have all these ones over the army and I don't think it would look odd at all. Uh, and, the, and the key to that was using those that same shadow colour, that same highlight colour. Uh, I think as well, quite important, the little extras that are around the model, the other elements of it, so I say the metals, the leather, things like that, either wanted to keep them very, very neutral um, so things like that, that sort of mustard yellow sash, um, I just didn't want it to stand out too much, so sort of hoped it kind of faded into the background, uh, and then went, say, very light with the shoulder pad and very dark uh, with other elements such as the quills and stuff, uh, and that reason being that the they would the skin itself would stand out next to those next to those things. Um, I know it's certainly something I struggle with, particularly when I'm painting models that don't have lots of armour on them. Um, it can all end up being that sort of one level of value where... It's just all sort of browny, grey, greeny, you know, whatever. And uh, particularly on the table, that doesn't stand out terribly well. Um, but yeah, I've I have thoroughly enjoyed painting these guys. I think this is efficient. I think you could get an army done like this um, in a decent amount of time frame. They are, they're not quick to paint. You have to. Be, I think you have to be careful with them. 
um, the, the, there are elements of them where you 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 are going to have to take your time. You're going to have to have a decent brush, a bit of brush control, because there are little details um, to get into. So I, I guess just be be prepared. Um, and actually, speaking of, uh, I, I mentioned earlier Harry, uh, one of our commission painters. He already has a crew army, so I sent him through some of the other bits from this box just to paint up. Um, and he's you know he's taking these to the nth degree for army painting. Um, I'm sticking some pictures up of them now. I just think they're absolutely wonderful. I'll pop his Instagram um, tag on there as well so you can go and check out his account. Um, but yeah, look how cool these group models can look if you're willing to take, you know, that extra time with them. Uh, I think it just, yeah, just absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy for those of you that uh, collect your tower armies and have wanted some crew auxiliaries and stuff because now you've got awesome set of models that are very, very enjoyable to paint. And actually... I had a lot more fun painting these than I than I thought I would. Um, I think maybe that's just because they have such a strong kind of look, and I feel like this painting, whilst it isn't you know classic sort of box art style, I think it really suits them. Um, and also, it's a style of painting that I thoroughly enjoy uh, doing. Sort of kind of muted, kind of mellow. Um, just had yeah an awful lot uh, of fun with that. So as usual, if you've got any questions about anything I've done in the video pop them down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks ever so much for all of your support. Take care. And I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.